Well, the Singapore Hong Kong air travel bubble has a new date, May the 26th, a month from today. This comes six months after its initial planned launch. Now, back then, this quarantine free arrangement was deferred by both parties due to Hong Kong's worsening COVID 19 situation. As you know, in November last year, on the 22nd, we put off the launch of the bubble because of cases spiking in Hong Kong. So for five months, we have not given up on the air travel bubble. It's a very important initiative. And in these five months, a few important things have happened. Most important is that Hong Kong has very successfully controlled uh, their pandemic situation. I'm very happy for them. So as of now, every day they have a very small handful of community cases, sometimes two, three, one, some days zero. So on the whole, uh, the risk profile of Hong Kong and Singapore, the two cities, are now largely similar. Well, Mr Ong also said this arrangement will have stricter rules. Travellers must have been in either Singapore or Hong Kong in the last 14 days prior to departure. And this is on top of any time spent under stay-home notice or quarantine. And as agreed under the original deal, travellers from both sides must test negative for COVID-19 before they can board the bubble flights. For those going to Hong Kong, you must also install Hong Kong's Leave Home Safe mobile app. And for outbound Hong Kong passport holders to Singapore, you must be fully vaccinated. This vaccination requirement, though, will not apply to Singapore citizens and others who don't hold Hong Kong travel documents. The bubble will be suspended if the seven-day moving average of unlinked community cases in either country goes above five. Now, the bubble will start cautiously. These are the flights. Singapore Airlines in blue, Cathay Pacific in red. And for the first two weeks from May 26th to June 7th, both airlines will operate one flight a day in each direction, capped at 200 passengers on each flight. The numbers will be reviewed thereafter. From June the 9th, SIA will start operating daily flights between the two countries, while Cathay Pacific will have daily return flights from June 10th. News editor Karamjit Kaur joins us now. Now she's spearheading the Straits Times' COVID-19 coverage. Welcome back, Karamjit. What are the key differences between this latest travel bubble and the initial agreements? Hi, Harento. Hi, Olivia. Um, so, you know, you've already mentioned um, some of the tighter requirements for the Singapore-Hong Kong uh, air travel bubble. For me, what's interesting is to look at um, what are the reasons for, you know, these uh, tighter requirements. And um, clearly, it's got to do with this uh, realisation that, one, uh, the situation is and will continue to be very dynamic in terms of the number of you know, COVID-19 cases, uh, both in Singapore, Hong Kong, and you know, to some extent in other countries as well. And also the need to be um, cautious. Uh, so if you look at you know, some of the requirements, for example, the fact that you know, travelers must have been in either Singapore or Hong Kong for 14 days uh, before they can you know, get onto this um, air travel bubble, um, and also, you know, the new app that they have to download and all that, you know, that uh, travelers from Hong Kong will have to be inoculated before they can come. Um, all this really, you know, stems from a uh, realization that there is a need uh, to be cautious. And very interesting during the doorstop, Minister Ong, you know, said that um, while the guidelines are very clear in terms of when the travel bubble will be suspended, so, you know, if the number of uh, cases, unlinked cases, um, over, uh, you know, moving average over seven days, if it's higher than five, uh, it will be suspended. But interesting uh, point that he made that resumption is not going to be so straightforward. Uh, you know, he said that there will be a complicated um, three-tier uh, sort of uh, framework that will be put in place uh, before, uh, you know, a decision is made to uh, resume. So he actually put it very nicely when he said, uh, it'll be easier to suspend, harder to resume. So I think that, you know, really in a nutshell um, encapsulates um, the whole, a bit of a different thinking this time around as far as the Singapore-Hong Kong uh, air travel bubble is concerned. Right. Well, Karam, be beyond the, uh, the tighter requirements that Mr. Ong mentioned, are there any further measures to minimise transmission risks? 
So I think um, one is uh, the airlines that will be involved in this, uh, you know, so uh, travellers, um, you know, on the Singapore, Hong Kong air travel bubble will only be able to fly designated carriers and that's essentially Singapore Airlines uh, from here and uh, Cathay Pacific for Hong Kong. So that, you know, it, it's, it's in itself um, a measure to ensure that the risk uh, are, uh, you know, are mitigated. And I think apart from that, um, it really, you know, travelers just have to continue to do the right thing, right? So, you know, in the same way that we put on our masks here and, you know, we observe all this, uh, you know, uh, hygiene habits, wash your hands and all that. It, it's the same thing that, you know, needs to be done um, when you are in Hong Kong or, you know, when people from Hong Kong come here. I think to some extent, the danger, if I may use that word, is that when people go on holiday, they sort of become a bit relaxed. I think that that is one thing that, um, you know, we don't want to see happen. So, you know, um, as and when this travel bubble launches and we hope that it will, I think that's something that all travellers uh, should remind themselves of constantly. We just checked earlier and we, we saw that our bubble tickets to Hong Kong on Singapore Airlines are about $700 uh, for return flight. Uh, like what we saw when the bubble was first announced back in November, do you foresee people this time round snapping up the tickets? For sure, I certainly expect that ticket prices will go up. Um, you know, we've talked many times about the pent up uh, demand for travel in Singapore. People really want to, you know, go out there and just, you know, go on a, a holiday. Um, so I'm really sh quite sure that the, you know, prices will go up. And, you know, despite the fact that, um, you know, again, during the doorstop, Minister Ong said that, you know, we should be prepared for start, stop, start, stop, you know, in, uh, when he explained that, you know, yes, the plan is to launch this on May the 26th, but we will have to watch and see what happens. And even if it is launched, uh, if the situation becomes worse, then, you know, it, we will have to go into this, uh, what he calls the start, stop mode. Um, having said that, I don't think that will discourage um, people from wanting to get onto this flight. So I do expect that demand um, will be, uh, you know, strong. And uh, in fact, after the announcement was made, uh, Singapore Airlines issued a release and they've already, uh, you know, announced plans for a month-long special uh, menu, you know, in-flight menu. And um, there'll be uh, carrot cake and uh, nasi lemak, you know, for the flight. Uh, out from Singapore and from Hong Kong coming in, um, they are talking about offering dim sum and all that. So certainly, you know, it, that there will be some uh, excitement and anticipation, um, you know, over this bubble. And I don't think this is the last that we will see, hopefully. I mean, again, when asked at the doorstop, uh, you know, whether Singapore was in discussions with other countries, he talked about how, you know, we're always open to uh, having similar arrangements with safe countries. And he mentioned a few countries, uh, specifically New Zealand, Australia, um, China, Brunei, Taiwan as well. So um, I guess the next one month we'll have to wait and see what happens and hopefully that flight will take off on May the 26th. Well, Karam, it's always a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you so much for coming on the show. That was Karamjit Kaur, news editor at The Straits Times.